then, we're off back into the Larry Gru again. Uh, this time, going to go and tackle Brea Riak. Just stayed at the uh, Colin Bridge Hotel last night. It's really good. Let the adventure begin. Solo hike today in the heart of the Cairngorms. Just parked at the Sugar Bowl car park and uh, making my way up to Breriac through the uh, Larry Grew briefly and then uh, up to the tops and, um, and back home. However, if the conditions are favourable up the top, I might traverse round to Cairntool. Um, but if I do that, the six hour hike is turning into a uh, 10 hour, 11, 12 hour hike, who knows. Um, I've got an emergency system in my bag with a bivy, quilt, and uh, the Neo uh, X-Lite as well. Uh, the emergency sack is obviously for shelter, and um, that weighs in at only 1.6 kilograms, which is pretty good considering it's a, uh, it's a, a comfortable, well, semi-comfortable emergency uh, Shelter, bivy. Um, I've got the uh, the light wave storm chaser bivy. It's quite pricey, but it's, uh, it's about 500 grams. The Neo Air is about two or three hundred grams, and then the uh, the quilt, and then my liner, um, a few other bits. That's about 800 grams, something like that. So, so yeah, this is the first path from the Sugar Bowl car park. Uh, you just park up; it's four pounds for the day. Make sure you take uh, pound coins. Luckily, I had four of them. <laughs> um, and then yeah, you just walk through the forest a little bit, and uh, and over to the bridge which I'm just coming up to now. I'm probably checking again near the uh, Charlemagne Gap. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be a really good day and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, showing you guys the journey. So that's Cairngore Mountain, the, uh, the ski centre. the path dips down here uh, to the water to the stream and then you climb back up up there that's the Charlemagne Gap so at a leisurely kind of pace it takes about an hour from the Sugar Bowl car park to the Charlemagne Gap um, it's a few miles it's like two or three miles but uh, yeah, in reality, it's an hour walk and uh, it's good to kind of warm up before entering the Glen. So this is the uh, Charlemagne Gap, the beginning of it. And uh, you can see that the climate now, it's completely different to my, uh, my original hike that I did. Top right corner, if you want to click the link and check it out. Um, it's all dry and uh, you can see all the soil I don't know if that's peat or not I'm not sure but um, it's much easier to get traction on these rocks when they're dry it makes a huge difference speeds you up big time um, so yeah this is the Charlemagne Gap and uh, it's quite a bad avalanche area 
because the uh, the snow piles up on either side and uh, can kind of tip you in uh, like like the snow could tip in and you can obviously you can get caught in it I think there was a disaster maybe 20 years ago I'm not too sure if you know any more information on that drop us a comment below um, but you can see how the snow would pile up and just fall in if there was any any sort of loose area on the side and uh, I wouldn't want to be stood down here uh, if there was if there was snow piled up either side I'd probably avoid it uh, yeah we're doing quite well um, a few miles to go before I uh, start the ascent of Breiriak 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 don't know how you say it and uh yeah, it's just good to be out, to be honest. Bit of a drive up, mind. It was about 350, 400 miles, something like that. It was a long drive. So it's really quite easy to uh, climb over these rocks when the weather's like this, when it's dry, but uh, when it's wet or snowy, it's, uh, it's a nightmare to be honest with you. So quiet here, you could hear a pin drop. Time check, half 12, set off at 11, an hour and a half, through the Charlemagne Gap, doing all right. So there's a path there, going up there, up the top, and then round up this part here. I'll get to the I'll get to the top to Breiriak, and then I'll decide whether I'm going to traverse round to Cairntall. But um, if I do that, it's going to add about four hours on to the hike, which is uh, which is pretty extreme. So we'll see. It's either going to be half six finish or a, um, a seven o'clock finish, we'll see. Um, well, half six or half seven for just Bray Reac, but it'll be about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock for um, for Cairntall, so we'll see. It's, uh, it's just after half 12 now. Yeah, there's something about this glen that's uh, breathtaking. Love it, absolutely love it. The Larry Grew, Ben McDewey on the left up there somewhere, and. Breiriak and today we're not going down there like last time video in the right top corner <laughs> uh, we're going up here well I'm going up here right then see you in a bit so you've got to descend here and then you've got to go back up unfortunately but it's just the uh, nature of the beast I love, uh, I love a bit of flowing water to me Absolutely love it. This is uh, this is the true wilderness now. Very remote, very remote indeed. So yeah, it was as I was saying at the beginning of uh, the video. This is my uh, first solo hike, so I've only really got my camera for company. Um, which I know sounds a bit weird, but um, yeah, it all helps. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting up to the, the tops now. Uh, the wind's only about 10 kilometers an hour, which uh, touch wood, it stays like that. Well, I just made it up that steep incline. Uh, oh, it was horrible, <laughs> just down there. Got a proper path now to walk on again, thank God for that. And uh, yeah, so the ascent begins. Just bumped in some uh, fellow hikers who uh, haven't done this peak before. Um, 
and uh, it was just nice. It's just nice having a chat, you know, some uh, some human contact. They're the first people that I've seen all uh, all day, pretty much. Uh, yeah, making slow progress. I don't want to tire myself out, so uh, just pacing myself and uh, just taking in the views. To be honest with you. The looks, the, by the looks of things, over that way, um, it looks like a really good climbing spot. It looks quite, quite steep, uh, almost vertical actually, but maybe one day I'll start climbing stuff like that, who knows. This is the, uh, the path quality, which is good. And um, yeah, we're going up there, probably a false summit. <laughs> Um, yeah, favourable conditions at the moment, so really grateful for that. Just give you some views across um, that sort of Abbey Moor over there. That's the gap over there, Charlemagne Gap. That's where um, I was maybe an hour ago, something like that. I've not really checked. Um, there's loads of little. Uh, do you know what? In England, we call them tarns, don't we? But I don't know what they're called in Scottish. If you know, drop us a comment below. But uh, you can see it's a vast, a vast plain there. You could have a really good wild camp spot there. But uh, yeah, you can see right across the Cairngorm range from here. It uh, really is a special place. I absolutely love it. Right then onwards and upwards bit of a, mor a morale boost um, I only need to get up there and then I think it should be well I don't want to say plain sailing <laughs> but uh, I think I've done the majority of the ascent now a lot of people seem to be uh, doing this in two days uh, staying at the Coral Bothy um, but I'm going to try and get it done in one day because sunset in this part of the world at the moment in, uh, in June, beginning of June um, is about half nine something like that which is really late so I've got plenty of light um, how do I feel? Uh, probably say I'd probably say about a six or a seven out of ten at the minute on energy. Um, I'm gonna have some food up the top, uh, drink plenty of water, and uh, and then I'm hoping my energy levels go back up. This is a real, real nice view down into the Larry Grew, into the Glen. There's a peak over there as well, that's 1,058 metres. I'd say I'm uh, not quite level with it, but just under, so I'm probably stood at about 1,000 metres. So quiet up here, it's great. As you can see, uh, there's a bit of a boulder field up here. This is a real mental battle getting up here. It just literally goes on forever. You can see just how far away the Charlemagne Gap is now. It's absolutely miles away. Um, I had the dilemma when I was packing, I thought, shall I literally pack fast and light, put trainers on and just kind of double up the pace. But I thought, if I get into, if I get into difficulty, then I won't be prepared. So it's kind of, it's a bit slower pace, but at least I feel a bit more reassured just in case anything would go wrong um, yeah it's very much very much a mental 
battle you know there's a lot of internal thoughts a lot of uh, doubts and stuff like that and then um, yeah it's just kind of the more determined guys got to shout louder than the, the doubtful guy really um, I'll get there I mean I'm not far really but it's just I would like to do Cairn Tool as well but I'd probably be biting off more than I can chew with that uh, I can't wait to show you the uh, the carry anyway with with uh, fantastic views um, anyway nearly nearly very very nearly there you can see that the landscape has changed completely it's just absolutely featureless there's uh, the ground's really soft it's really nice to walk on really pleasant such a uh, such a release actually just getting onto this bit here just over the brow there we've got Raya React somewhere I think it's to the right um, I'm just trying to express some emotion really um, as you can see I'm smiling my head off <laughs> can't stop smiling um, it's just the small things you know it's uh, it's just this path is so flat it's just uh, like I'm overwhelmed with uh, with I don't know joy I guess um, just wanted to capture it on camera really um, Anyway, happy bunny. <laughs> you know, when I said this is pretty much the last ascent, <laughs> it's not. There's another one. <laughs> it's that there, look. I think we're about nine miles in now. We're literally. But when I say we, I keep saying we, I just mean me and you guys. Uh, literally in the middle of nowhere now. Um, I've not seen anyone, which I, I don't get it because it's bank holiday. It's a Thursday, so where is everyone? Which suggests, I don't know, <laughs> it's not very popular for a reason. I mean, it is a tough hike. It is tough. Um, can't wait to just get to the summit now, Rayriac, and and go back. I'm not. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to tackle Ken Tall as well. I think that'd be that'd be chaos. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do that another time. I think. Check out that um, Bob Scott Boffy, which is just past Braemar use that and possibly the core Bothy again hit up Devil's Point and uh, and uh, Kentall and then go back that way I think because this is just an absolute beast this is probably the most ascent I've ever done actually uh, I'll let you know the stats as well all the uh, elevation stats I'll put them in the description Right, nearly there, <laughs> nearly there. This is the uh, first major piece of snow that I've seen. It's a really nice temp, it's, uh, it feels like it's about five or six, something like that. I'm only wearing my base light, that's it. But I'm fine with that. I've got no idea what that is. I don't know what that is. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Met some really interesting people along the way. I was speaking to this guy and he had like a, like a five litre pack on and um, had his trainers on and he said he'd run from the Sugar Ball car park down the Larry Grew, up Cairn Tool, around the Corrie, 
and then I just ran past him. Now, well, he just ran past me, and then we just uh, we were just chatting then, and I thought, how the hell have you ran that far? You know, it's amazing. Anyway, I promise you, this is the final ascent. <laughs> I promise you, final ascent. I've just come up to the uh, the quarry here, where uh, Ray Riak is only meters away, and uh, I've never seen anything like it. It's just, it's absolutely magnificent. I'm going to show you now. got to be without doubt one of the best walks I've ever done uh, one of the most challenging but one of the best and the great thing it's all mine the summit there's no one here on a bank holiday Thursday right better get back home Here we are. How are you? Yeah, very well. It's literally just there, Bray Ria. You don't mind if I film you, do you? <laughs> you'll uh, you'll be famous if you want. I, I put I put all my stuff on YouTube, so. Oh cool. Um, yeah, it's just Hike a Bob on YouTube. Oh nice. Yeah, but how have you found it so far? Really enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah. Our first ever day in the Cairngorm. Oh, is it? Um, yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. insane. <laughs> Beats London anyway. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, safe travels anyway. Yes, are, you, are you going over to Cantal now? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. So oh, fantastic. See you later, mate. If you're watching that, mate, um, great to meet you. Got to say, that, that's the biggest bag I've ever seen in the Cam Gorm. Fair play to you, mate. Fair play to you. <laughs> It looked like it was about 120 litres. Could you confirm that in a comment below? <laughs> anyway, good to see you. Safe travels if you're watching this. <coughs> buzzing. Ray React. Done. Absolutely buzzing. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, it was a tough one. Well, it's not over yet. I've got to get back home, but yeah. Well, Cairn Tool anyway, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you, Cairn Tool. You're over there, look. There you are. You stubborn mountain, you. Oh, brilliant. Over the moon. <laughs> Conditions have changed. Hail slash heavy rain. Uh, Visibility to now 100 meters. I, uh, as soon as I felt a few drops, 
I got my uh, I got my coat out straight away. Just I always try to act fast when uh, the conditions change. Um, yeah, I'm just in the zone now. Just gonna. I'm quite relaxed actually. I'm quite relaxed. And um, yeah, I'm just following the path. And uh, I'll be home in about I don't know, a couple of hours or something like that. <laughs> um, it's been absolutely miserable for the past sort of two and a half hours. Um, I can finally see the Charlemagne Gap. So uh, my, my, my morale has, uh, has lifted quite a bit. Uh, I've got the monster out just as a bit of a morale boost again. Um, I've popped two ibuprofen and two paracetamol because uh, descending this much uh, puts a lot of strain on your knees. So um, This will probably be my last one, last video. I might do um, one more, something like that, but hope you've enjoyed the journey. Um, still got about two hours, two and a half hours to go anyway, but... Um, yeah, I hope you've picked up a real feel for, you know, the mountain and everything that the Cairngorms has got to offer. Well, well maybe not everything, but um, yeah. But other than that, I will, um, yeah, I'll catch up with you shortly. <sighs> Lens is cracked on uh, the Osmo action. Got a spare though, so I'm all right. Um, yeah, I've just, there's no words really. I'm absolutely exhausted. Um, I've just come through the gap now. And uh, yeah, I really need to get a big meal in me. Um, yeah, I need calories. I don't think I've ever done a walk before where I've actually wanted to fall asleep. Um, that's how I feel right now. Um, there's no chance of that though, no chance, because um, I'm nearly there now, I'm nearly uh, back at the car, by far the toughest walk I've ever done, um, we did a uh, Snowdonia hike the other day, and um, top right corner, I don't know where that is, I don't know if it's there, right or there I don't know my brain's absolutely fried um, but yeah this this one I think it's about 1600 meters or so I don't know I'm gonna post it on my Instagram I uh, like the Strava information if you if you're into that sort of stuff That's it. If you like the video, subscribe, drop us a comment, and uh, and until next time, look forward to it. Take care. On the road, sat off at 11, 20 past seven. So uh, first slug.